Werner von Braun is often hailed as one of the fathers of modern space travel. He was an aerospace engineer, space architect, astronomer, physicist, and possibly a Nazi. He was born in Poland to a noble family in 1912. He was interested in engineering and rocketry from an early age, notably detonating a toy car in a busy street while trying to emulate Max Vallier and Fritz von Opel with their rocket-propelled cars. He gained a love for the stars when his mother gave him a telescope. When he was in high school, he began reading about the exploits of rocket pioneer Hermann Oberth. He later worked with Oberth on liquid-fueled engines at the Technical University of Berlin. Von Braun later credited Oberth as his lifetime inspiration, saying, I, myself, owe to him not only the guiding star of my life, but also my first contact with the theoretical and practical aspects of rocketry and space travel. A place of honor should be reserved in the history of science and technology for his groundbreaking contributions in the field of astronautics. Von Braun began working closely with the German government to develop new rocket technologies. However, there was a catch. The Third Reich demanded that he join the Nazi party in 1939. He conceded to these demands later that same year, later saying that not doing so would have meant abandoning his life's work. As World War II raged on, there was an increasing pressure from the Third Reich to weaponize von Braun's inventions. Von Braun, despite wanting to use rockets for the exploration of space, allowed this, seeing it as his duty to protect his country. Thus began the Aggregat program. In 1943, the A-4 rocket was deemed operational and dubbed the V-2 missile. Von Braun had created the first ballistic missile. He later expressed regret for inventing one of the most lethal forms of weaponry, but stood by his decision to defend Germany. The inventor of the liquid-fueled rocket engine, Robert Goddard, was dismayed when he recognized many of his inventions being used in the V-2. As he became aware of the Nazi party's activities during the war, he became more and more rebellious. He was arrested multiple times by the SS and was only left alive for his knowledge. In 1945, he surrendered to the American military and was transferred to the United States. He was immediately put to work designing missiles for use by the U.S. Army, an occupation he loathed. He had gone from leading a vast team of scientists and engineers to being bossed around by a 26-year-old Army major that he affectionately named Pimply. All requests for additional funding and resources were ignored, and he could do little more than reassemble old V-2 missiles for test launches. Von Braun, without a country or a cause, reverted to his pre-war goal. He began requesting clearance to develop rockets for scientific and exploration purposes. These requests were promptly ignored, until a faithful 1957 launch. Sputnik was launched on the 4th of October, 1957. The Army Ballistic Missile Agency immediately tasked Von Braun with developing a rocket capable of carrying an American satellite into orbit. Von Braun did so, and even beat out the competing agencies formed by the Navy and funded by the government. Von Braun's Jupiter-C missile carried the first U.S. satellite into orbit on January 31, 1958. Then-Senator Lyndon B. Johnson, recognizing the need to have a separate agency to handle U.S. launches, used his influence as Senate Majority Leader to found NASA in 1958. Von Braun had a new vision now. He imagined a multi-stage rocket that he dubbed Saturn, that would be capable of not only carrying satellites into orbit, but would also carry humans. Now that he had the resources to make it a reality, he was skeptical of joining NASA, stating that he would only join if he were allowed to continue its development. His request was hastily approved. He had his rocket, but he also needed a spacecraft. After President John F. Kennedy's historic speech and Yuri Gagarin's first space flight, he began work on a three-step program. The first step, dubbed Mercury, would be basic testing within a one-man pod. The next step, Gemini, would be testing of advanced maneuvers within a two-man pod. The third step would be called Apollo, in which all of the tested technologies would become operational. As Mercury and Gemini were underway, Von Braun was steaming ahead in the development of the Saturn rocket that he imagined almost a decade earlier. His work on the Saturn rocket family resulted in the creation of the most powerful and capable rocket ever created. So powerful that no rocket can match it almost 50 years after its first launch. A Saturn V could lift 118 metric tons into orbit. It was this rocket that would be used for the Apollo program, and it successfully launched 24 humans to the moon between 1968 and 1972. It is one of the only rockets to never suffer a complete failure. After Apollo, Von Braun envisioned a system that he called the Space Transportation System, capable of creating colonies on the Moon and Mars. However, he hit a roadblock. After the historic launch of Apollo 11, Congress and the Senate slashed NASA's funding. 
President Lyndon B. Johnson, upon finding out that his fellow politicians were trying to kill the agency he helped create, said, The way the American people are, now that they have all this capability, instead of taking advantage of it, they'll probably just piss it all away. In the end, only a single piece of Von Braun's space transportation system was ever realized, and he never got to see it. He died in 1977 of kidney and pancreatic cancer, which was untreatable at the time. His legacy lives on in the space shuttle. While it never went to Mars, the space shuttle still bears the name Space Transportation System, and all shuttle missions are numbered STS-1 through 135.